Fernando, Fernando, good morning. Can you hear? Hello? Now I am listening to you. Good morning. Good evening. Good morning. How do you do today? I'm fine, Auntie. I'm fine and, and I'm happy to, to be here and, and to converse with you, to have a conversation. And thank you for the messages on about on the fight mm -hmm. <laughs> and for helping me with the also with with the ideas on how to how it, to make it you know this this new project yes so i would like to congratulate you for the the session on monday and and uh, the broad conversation that all of you had I was amazed and I told myself, look, Eti, each and every one of them can open a circle study because each and every one of them is creating a content by speaking. So I, so I wrote you a comment under this conversation by Tranan from Man yes, Monday and we shall speak about the project that you intend to to serve to the thank world. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes in fact, the Vaitanan wa was last Monday, and this m this last Monday was Ikif that we mm -hmm. talked about, and and I could not upload yet the the file, but but we could. It is it has been very good to f to talk to to the friends. We have like a circle with intimacy. And it it has been very very nice to talk. Thank you. I noticed Parashat uh, Pa'et Hanan only one night ago because I was occupied with a book. So only one night ago I noticed Parashat Pa'et Hanan, which is the previous parasha, and I listened to it and I was amazed. And please, uh, how do you say, deliver this message to the participants and how do you say to give them uh, a great uh, support in the future innovation and initiation. Thank you. Thank you. It, Thank it will you. be delivered. Thank, Thank you so much. Eniola, good morning. How do you do? Morning, Eti. Morning, Fernando. Morning, friends. I'm very well. Thank you. How are you? Fine. Today, the, the weather is a bit better, is a bit more manageable. So, and I'm very glad to be here with you today. And there was a great question um, after the last class on Monday on YouTube. And I thought to open our session today with the question and to see how we approach this question in a creative way. So let's move into the whiteboard and see there is a text here. One second. One second. And do you see all of this? Oh, there is a sound, there is a background sound from one of the uh, microphones which is open. Do you have the whiteboard on? Can you see the whiteboard? Excuse me. Yes, good morning, Felipe, and good morning, Aniola. I can see it, yes. Thank you. Good morning, Felipe. Good morning, everyone on YouTube. And on the whiteboard, oh. yes, Fernando, would you like to say something? Yes, good morning. Good evening, Eti, Niola, Fernando and friends. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much. And thank since you. Thank you. And since we, here is the, the question that we have received under our last conversation on Monday. There is a question and in regarding to this question I thought to bring the text and also the painting and let's maybe start with the question because the question can give us a certain focus. Who would like to please read the question? This is on the purple background. This is, yes, who would like to read the question? I can read it. Thank you. Thank you. So the, the question is, please also discuss another camel story of Rebecca and Isaac in Genesis 24, 64. 
since 307 plus 73 is equal to 380 so did Rebecca leap out of duality 380 into singularity 190 then why did she veil or cover please also discuss Rebecca's name meaning to bind were they both binded before becoming bound in marriage and why did Isaac not receive a name like Abram Jacob and Joseph did thanks thank you so much so what do you think about this question in general when you see the text and in relation to what we have spoke on Monday about the camel and so the value of camel how do you perceive this question it is a good question it, it is a really really beautiful question uh, it is good because we all we can start already with an abstract idea about the camel mm -hmm. so now we have to face what does it mean Rivka and it and it's hack yes. and right. everything is connected also to Parashat Vaitranan I will open it but first let's read the text move to the painting let's make it soft because it was a hard opening with question and abstract so let's take it soft this is the the text then we shall move to the painting and we shall ask guide questions and we shall move through the conversation of the conversation will give us a direction of thinking to answer those questions so who would like to read here this is genesis 24 verses 63 until 67 to have the context on Okay, I don't know if any other wishes to read it. Let's see. Oh, um, I am. Um, I'm working on it, but I can't see the text yet. The okay. screen that I have to, is too small, yes. so I can't yes. read yet. One I see. Already, I'll let you know. Okay. Also, the, there is a background sound. So, Fernando, can you please read the text? Okay. So, yes. Okay. Uh, so Genesis chapter 24, Bereshit, Sag 63, okay. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field of the, in the field at the eventide. And he lifted, lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, there were camels coming. And Rivka lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she liked it from the camel and she said unto the servant what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us and the servant said it is my master and she took her veil and covered herself and the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done and Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rivka and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted for his mother. Thank you so much. So those are the, the verses in which Rebecca is already coming with Eliezer from her father's home. They are coming to Isaac, to the land of Canaan because since Isaac was bound he cannot leave the the land Canaan unlike his father Abraham and his son Jacob and Esau he's connected to the he, he never leaves Canaan he's always there and it also has a value Canaan and we see how all of those things are connected but please let's make a soft entry and see what is happening in this painting from the 16th century this is Italian painter what do we see here the name is Rebecca at the well meaning this painting in a way in terms of text is written or is being painted before the verses that Fernando was reading this is still next to her home in the well 
where who is standing next to the well and what is happening there can you describe please uh, we can see the camels we can see rivka uh, maybe a servant from rivka i don't know somebody's taking care of the camels or something like this we can see three camels we can see rivka we can see eliezer giving jewels to her i think and this another man is her father, maybe? I don't know. I'm, I'm let's see, let's see, kidding. let's see. I don't know, I really don't know. Okay. Where is Rebecca? Where is she standing on the left side here with the, so to speak, orange yes. dressing? Yes. Who is the man yes. here? What would you say? Who looks to you like Eliezer? Seems to you, we don't know. Who seems to you? like Eliezer the one who is in the ground for me for you is the one is in okay yes I don't know it I don't okay know. okay really okay know. this is interesting this is interesting yes yes Felipe would you like to describe what do you see in the painting I just thought that the man who is standing here, this is Eliezer, and he's conversing because there is a sense of a con he's turning his face to her, and there is a sense of conversation between the two. And he has a helper, an assistant that he, the assistant, Eliezer assistant, is carrying, so to speak the jewelry I mean Eliezer does not walk with the things yes. he's just conversing and he has a helper how do we know that he has a helper the helper always also in the Greek uh, history the helpers or the maids usually wear short short dressing when we are going to higher up uh, let's say levels in society people are well dressed already in ancient times the more people are considered to be noble the more dressed they are so this is here Eliezer he turns to her he has a cape as well there's a bush there's a tree here there's a treasure box here on the right from which yes. he's pulling jewelry yes this is just a uh, general yes yes Please, can yes. And, Eli, and, and, if, and now, yes, I, I agree with you. And if I remember, Eliezer was the elder servant, the elder helper from Abraham. True. You know, like he was an ancient man, not an, an, in yes. the Bible story, if I remember. Yes. Also, he is conversing the meaning of Eliezer 318. It means Siach, Eliezer in Hebrew, the value of of Eliezer is 318, like a conversation. And we see uh, that he is in a position of a conversation with the lady that will be Rebecca. This is just a, just a little opening, yes. Now, let's move again to the question. If you feel, if you feel that you want to return to the painting, we, ca we can always move and return. Now, he asked here, this is Don who is asking, the camel story of Rebecca and Isaac since 307. He does not write it, but the value of Rebecca, let's open it. What is the value of Rivka, Rebecca? One second, let's write it here. Rodrigo is here with the mathematics. This is great. Good morning, Rodrigo. Hello, Shalom, Eti. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I just correct the ink because it is very, very thin ink at the moment. 
I hope that we can have a better one. Not, not writing, let's see. We are trying to answer, Rodrigo, there is um, a question here from YouTube, which sent from Dawn, and we are trying to answer. And at the moment, my pen is not writing, so I don't have... So we can answer maybe this question by heart, because I cannot write. It's not clear why, but I cannot write. Well, let's move it. One second, excuse me, I'm trying a new color, but let's see. No, it's not writing for some reason. So let's answer it by heart. Since 307, the value of Rebecca, Rivka, is 307. Here we have Rebecca. Here the name is written. I don't have any connection, it's not clear why. Rivka is 307, and Kemel, Gamal, is 73. So, so the question is, if Rebecca is 307, and Kemel, Gamal, is 73, Rebecca and the Kemel are 380. Now, Rebecca goes and returns, basically, to the land of Canaan. Rebecca on the camel. Rebecca is 307, camel is 73. Together they are 380. They arrive to the land of Canaan. And then comes the question Did Rebecca leap out of duality 380 into singularity 190? What do you think about this question? When, just to add another detail, that the value of Canaan, Knaan, Knaan, is 190. So, how would you answer this question? What do you think? Because at the moment, Rebecca saw Isaac, she fell or she leaped out of the camel. So, the question is, did she move from duality to singularity? What do you think about it? How would you access this question even? No, it is interesting because 380 and 190 is it's a reason 2 to 1, right? So yes. I understand what she's speaking. Yes. 380 is mit right? Mit yes. So he takes it as duality and he asks, the moment she saw Isaac, she leaped into singularity. She fell from the camel from 380 because Rebecca and camel, 307 plus 73, this is Egypt, or 380, or Rakia. By the way, Rakia, firmament, firmament, is also 380 and she moved into singularity yes and and the answer is yes the land of canaan is the land of the one and once they arrived yes this is what she does yes do we understand the, the way of thinking Do we? Yes, yes. Good, good. Then, why did she veil or cover? What do you think? Why, why Rebecca was covered? Uh, Etty. Is yeah. the two not revealed and the one be concealed? Yes, the one is concealed. Yes. Yes. The one is concealed. So she met the one and then she covers. Is that clear? Also, Tamar, Tamar in the story of Judah and Tamar, Tamar is covered. Yes, whenever we have a cover, there is a coverage of multiplicity. 
to come to the one. Is that clear? Or not? Yes. 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 Also yes. in the in the marriage, uh, how do you say in the wedding, the the bride is covered with a veil. Only the the groom or the future husband he is the one that has the the access to lift the veil because she is only for the one who pulls the veil. Questions or thoughts? The bride, also the bread, the bride. The also bride, the yes. Veil, right? Yes, the bride and the bread. We cover the bread and we cover the bride. This is true. We cover the bread and the bride. Yes, grace is always covered. Grace. Yes. According to Bala Sulam, this is how he writes uh, his interpretation to the Book of Zohar, the two kinds of um, way to relate the world. Concealed grace or covered grace, chasadim mechusim, or um, how do you say expressed or revelation of wisdom. Gilui Chochma, Gilui Chochma, the revelation of wisdom, or Chasadim Echusim. Usually the quality of the Vav, now I move into abstract field. Usually when we speak of the letters of the Tetragrammaton, the quality of the Vav, the quality of Tiferet, is Chasadim Mechusim, covered grace. The quality of the hay, the last hay of the Tetragrammaton, is Chokhmah, or the revelation of wisdom, Gilui Chokhmah. This is why the hay, the last hay, is composed of Daled and Yod. And Yod is, in a way, Yad, the hand that will receive the wisdom, the revelation of wisdom. The malchut, malchut, is a quality is to receive, receive the wisdom. And it's like relationship between husband and wife. The husband is the vav, is concealed grace. And the wife is to receive wisdom. This is it. This is how it works. Yes, when there is a face-to-face -face relation in a marriage, the husband will give grace, do good. And from the, the wife's side is a revelation of wisdom. And revelation of wisdom is beautiful. And then we have it. Is that is that concept clear? Why the vav is concealed grace from the letters or not? Could you expand a little a little further? Is part what, what? Why the vav is concealed grace? Is considered to be grace in the book yes. of Zohar. Yes. The. In a way, the vav, has, he is, how do you say, he's he's, channeled, only to do one thing. The vav, is channeled, to do grace to give to the heavenly wisdom. I mean, the heavenly wisdom or the heavenly kingdom is Malchut. So he, 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 he is channeled to do only good, only covered grace. And because he is in a way, how do you say,
he is maintaining the relation by doing just good. Because he is in a way the husband is Ish. Now I move to another word. Ish. Ish, man, comes from Ish, fire. If he will be wise, he will increase the fire and the house will be burned. So he is bound, the man, the husband, only to do good. Not to be wise, but to do good. What is to do good? To do the right thing. Don't to, you don't, don't have to be wise, but to be good. And this is me, and this is means, what does it mean? Covered grace, always to do grace. And grace comes in time, because grace chesed, chesed is 72. Also, Chokhmah, the feeling of the name is 72. But Chokhmah 72, Yod Hei Vav Hei, this is in the mind. But when we come into time and space, the 72 convert, Chokhmah converts to grace. And this is what the, the husband does grace, to do good. He's bound to do good. Chesed olam yibane, the world will be built by grace. This is why Abraham is the one who starts the, the universe. We have like 20 generations from Adam to Abraham. And in Abraham we start a new creation with chesed, with grace. Whatever, whatever Abraham does is in the realm of grace because grace is still bound to the one. Grace is like Yom Echad. Echad is one. It's not Sunday. Like in, in Genesis 1, we, we, yes, Yom Echad, one day. One day is grace. Do we understand all of it? Oh, there's, did I move too fast from spheres to no, husband? No, no, under, I understand. No, no, no. It is beautiful. And and I was just wondering, but uh, I, I I don't want to, to bring some other elements to the conversation, but but since I, <laughs> since I started, uh, you are saying that the Vav, the Zerampin, is always uh, his purpose is to do grace yes to the heavenly kingdom yes true but but we have we have two kinds of relationship yes we have the back to back relationship and we have front to front relationship and the the bride and husband is the front to front relationship is when the feminine waters is bringing out from the galut from the mm. from the exile but we have also the back to back relationship when and I tend to think that the when we have this kind of relationship the back to back when we do not have a good relationship between the what is hidden and what is manifested what we have inside and what is happening outside or the, the male and the female. Uh, instead of uh, appears to be not uh, not good what is coming from the the Vav, it is not good only because we cannot see or we cannot relate with it. Uh, what I what is on my mind is that sometimes we we receive things that we judge as not good, but from our perspective, from our lower perspective, but we cannot see the whole thing. thing. So could be good if we had a, a larger perspective or something like this. I don't know, it just, just bringing elements. I hope to not disturb what you are bringing. No, no, you did not. In this case, this is just a beautiful 
comment to move again to the relationship between Isaac, Rebecca, and Parashat Vaitranan, the discussion that you had. Because when we take the value of Isaac, which is 208, and Rebecca 307, what do we get? What is the sum? 515. 515, which is the value of which words? Tefillah. Tefillah, prayer. That's great. Tefillah and also shira, poetry. Poetry. It is beautiful. Yes. True. And True. as Weinreb says, Isaac is coming from the well. The verse that, yes. I missed one verse before 63, he's coming from the well. If you look into this chapter, one verse or two before 63, he's coming from the well. And this is interesting as well, because Isaac 208 and the well 203, this is 411, like Kadosh. This is very, very interesting what is happening here. Here, Bir Lahai Ho. Liza came from the way of Bir Lahai Ho. O E. Yes, he came from the way. Yes, he came from. Ash, Hash, Aleph, and Yud. Yes, O E. Yes. So he came from the well, Isaac is 208, well is 203, and together 411. Can you see, can, do you see that, Rodrigo? Do you have a pen? 208? Yes. Yes, like Kadosh, Kadosh. Beautiful. Yes. So, so he can, yes. And you he remember? He can meet Rebecca. Yes, and you, you remember in one of the, your lessons, I was listening in Portuguese that uh, since I'm just I'm moving the, the, the time of the storytelling, they did not have children for 20 years, Rebecca and Isaac, and Isaac was praying. There is a, a verse that says that Isaac was praying <laughs> for Rebecca. Yes. Do you remember? This is interesting. Yes. Because the value of both of their names is prayer. This is wow. interesting because Isaac and Rebecca is 515, wow. like Tfilah. Yes, like Vaetchanan. Vaetchanan, the value of Vaetchanan, like the prayer of Moses to, for God to forgive the golden calf. Vaetchanan also has the value of. 515. It's interesting because the, the prayer is embedded in their names. The prayer is their names. Because there were other uh, ladies in the biblical stories who could not conceive uh, immediately after marriage. Or they were childless until... But for none of them there is a prayer. True or not true? Yes. Yes, because because prayer means both of their names together. And I can remember about this story, it is that since I mentioned the back-to-back -back and the front-to-front -front relationship, I think that Midrashim speaks that, or in the book of Sohar. Now I cannot remember where, but but he speaks that she had a son because Isaac was praying not for him, but was praying for Rivka. Like, she wanted so much to have a, a child, and he was, he was willing to give her and not to receive a child. And, all, and for its turn, Rivka was willing to have a son not for her but for Isaac so it was like um, they both were was 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 uh, expressing their will to give and not to receive something yes 
Yes, this is great story because it's a similar story of Boaz and Ruth. In the in the book of Ruth, we have the same uh, thought. They don't do this uh, because they want to do it, but as um, as a value, it is the right thing to do. Ruth does it because this is the right thing to do. Also, Boaz, this is the right thing to do. Not because they, ha they have a self-interest. This is very interesting. Yes. Um, just want to share uh, a thought. I don't know if it makes sense, but if I'm right, Eliezer is 318, yes. right? Yes. Uh, uh, Siach, the conversation. Siach. Mm -hmm. So in this picture, we have uh, the tefillah, the prayer, and the conversation, the helper is the conversation. I don't know, I just looked at the image and, and came to my mind because um, the prayer requires uh, this conversation with the soul, with the spirit, uh, just, just to mention, because we have the two elements to, to do the prayer, uh, Rebecca and Isaac, but helper, the Eliezer, we need this conversation, we need to to this dialogue, this ongoing conversation with the spirit, just to mention, just see the picture and think about yes. this. Yes, it is, you're right. It also, it is written in this uh, chapter, a few verses before, that Isaac went to converse in the field, Yitzchak, Yitzah Lasuach Basadeh, to converse, Lasuach. And the sages are saying, what is to converse in the field before the evening comes? What is to converse is to pray. So a conversation is also a prayer. And the moment that, um, because Eliezer did not know, he sent Abraham, sent him, but who knows where to go and who will come. And he said, the one who will water, not just me, but also the camels. This was his conversation and prayer. And she came. It is interesting because she appears all the time in connection to prayer, Rebecca. First in Eliezer, and then after uh, Isaac came from the field, conversing, praying in the field, and then later when Isaac is praying for children, when she is present, her, her presence means, this is very interesting, Because so if, uh, yes. Oh, please go ahead. No, please go if ahead. If you you if you look at her name, Resh Bet Kof Hey. If you change the Kof into Kaf, is like blessing. This is very interesting. Again, Rivka, Rivka. We write with Kof, but another letter has the sound of K, which is Kaf. And this is a blessing. And it is interesting because later she will be engaged in the blessing. She will exchange the dressing of Jacob to give him the blessing. This is also an interesting name. The sages say that it is written in Vine Reb, this book also of the Bible, that Rebecca is Eve. Rebecca is Eve in this moment of the blessing. This is why she dresses Jacob in the in those uh, garments. Also, the the letters. I mean, the letter Kof from her name is like the Kof that is appearing in the name of Cain when she was before Eve, Kaniti Isha Tashem. So this is very interesting. There is a lot to say about her name. It means also Rav. Rav, it means many. Yes. 
but also bet resh with we have here hey if we exchange it to aleph this is also a well and creation this is very interesting and she has to do with the water and she is next to the well and she is watering Eliezer and his camels and later they're coming and Isaac is coming from the well so she is the blessing and the prayer and the well multitask when Isaac and Vinerib speaks about it Isaac is uh, mostly passive you see in a, w in a way how the painter painted her as a, how do you say not passive but active you see how she is leaning forward she is not behaving like an innocent uh, child who is in the back she is in, in the forefront she's she almost it, yes. yes like almost her knees at the well you know she is in a way Eliezer is more shy and but she is with with the body posture saying I, I'm handling business here and this is before she's married she's a boss you see this yes is interesting it is yes please Philip, go ahead yes Philip. So just just to point this relation with eve and this active uh, role that eve uh, plays in the in the, the story of the creation and it looks like a adam adam is more passive than eve just as Rivka and it's quite quite interesting uh, it, Isaac being this uh, kind of uh, vessel for what Rivka uh, is trying to to present it's quite interesting this relation with Eve and Rivka It's interesting what you say because all the couples, they are Adam and Eve in their time. Sarah and Abraham are Adam and Eve in their time, 20 generations after. Isaac and Rebecca form a couple ship. Again, they are correcting Adam and Eve in their time. And so Jacob and so on. Each and every one of them in his time is making a correction I think she is the most except Rachel that is the most uh, associated with camels and as Weinreb showed in, in Monday's uh, session the Gimel has a split hoof this is the only letter Gimel that has a split foot multiplicity and her name Rebecca Rivka Rav Rav is many multiplicity except of Rachel that she was like leaning uh, when Laban was looking for her things I'm not sure she was leaning on the camel but also Rachel has to do with the tree of knowledge but Rebecca is the most uh, associated with camels that has a split hoof I mean the camel itself as an animal has a split hoof as well as the letter Gimel that has a split hoof and shows multiplicity. Do we understand this perspective of Gimel, Gamal, 
and her name Rebecca Rav Meni, do we understand? And how her name plus camel creates the value of Egypt, 380 or multiplicity. Do we understand that? Yes, it is quite amazing. And the singularity is 190 yes. that can, can make us remember the Hava, right? Because yes. if I remember well, yes. 19 is the sum of the word Hava. Yes, yes, true. That, that's it's, uh, it's like a, a confirmation that each and every pasuk, each and every one verse, contains a, a full explanation, a full perspective of of the Torah and of the of life as well. It is, you know, it's like uh, the 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 microcosm, the macrocosm. We can uh, appreciate the whole, uh, the, the whole uh, creation in in one verse, and at the f at the first, second, third, and <laughs> many many glances we we may look. It's it's, it's not uh, most. It's not likely that we will we would discover these truths right yeah. it's really beautiful thank you Eti for opening you're welcome now there was another question let's move from the picture oh we can stay I can ask it by heart there was another question that he was asking he says why of all of those people Abraham, Jacob, Joseph Isaac did not change his name. Abraham, Abraham was four letters. Avram became Abraham. Jacob J changed his name to Israel. Yosef changed his name to Yehosef. Later we find in the Bible, hey, additional, or in Thomas Mann stories, we find also Egyptians name. Why do you think that Isaac of all did not change his name, or his name was not changed. Why? I think that because his name is already 8 times 26, that is like... Uh, I can remember about what Feinrev speaks. I think that in the roots of the Bible, the the chapters like Threshold for the Eight and the Game are the names of the the, the titles, where he speaks that uh, the Eight represents the world to come. Yes. It is already above time and space. So Isaac received this name from Abraham and Sarah, which already represents this this long range perspective. This eight time twenty six. Yes, yes. His name is not from here. This is why his name did not change. So all the others they are moving in time, and their name is changed during in according to the course of movement in time. But Isaac is bound, and his name was given that he is beyond time. He is the eighth day. A time 26 and he does he lives beyond everything he also lived uh, the longest life more than his father he lived 180 years any questions that you would like to ask uh, just a tea uh. It's um, for a cu curiosity. I don't don't have this uh, access to the midrashim. I but it's uh, it it always intrigues me 
this long life of Isaac and uh, the, the uh, few times we, we hear about him in, in during Jacob's uh, story and it, it seems like he so he he kind of uh, treats himself from from the world in the elder age because you know there there is no mention of Isaac relating to Jacob uh, as far as I can remember only that uh, part that uh, Isaac knows that Joseph is not dead. But after this, uh, I, I can remember, you know, this this kind of relation, and I always wonder about this because there are many many years that they are both alive and could relate, and also in in Thomas Mann's book. Uh, I, I, I miss it more Isaac uh, you know inter interactions I, I, I couldn't uh, he doesn't mention Isaac too much and mm -hmm. it's interesting because it's like a, a character it's like a perspective that uh, it's hidden. It's really, really deep hidden. It's uh, Isaac uh, perspective. He's blind, right? And he's blind in his old age. He just to point. Thank you, Felipe. He lived longer because he didn't. He was not active in time and space he was bound bind by his father when he was 37 and uh, the binding was that only his missed hevel because 37 37 his age is is the value of hevel abel and it was a correction of Abel, not to kill Abel, just to, to bind the Havalim, the mists, that we have seven mists. And in a way, once a Abraham bound his hand and feet, what is left? And he was lifting his knife. What is left in Isaac was only the seven mists, or Ed. In the in the face, with the two mists or steams, ed the dim havalim of the eyes, two, two in the ears, two in the nostrils, one in the mouth. We have seven, like the menorah. And seven double thirty-seven. How much is it? Two fifty. Two fifty-nine. With the one, is two sixty. Ten times the tetragrammaton. This was the meaning of bi binding Isaac to bring him to the one. And since he was bound, how do you say, bind to the one, the consequence was that he was not active at all. This is also why he, this is the cause that he never left the land of Canaan. And his wife, Rebecca, and the children, Esau and Jacob, did everything. He, he was, uh, from the age of 37, he was taken out of the picture. Even before, when God already announced uh, in the in the time of three days after Abraham circumcised himself, three days after when he was still in pain, when the angels came to visit, three days after the circumcision, already he was informed that he should have a son and, and so, and he was laughing and then 
Sarah was laughing already in this uh, speech or conversation of the angels there is a deliverance there is a prophecy you shall have a son and he shall laugh he shall laugh because he is not from here this child supposed to what Abraham I mean when Isaac was born and then we arrive to this interesting number Abraham was 100 years old Sarah was 90 years old their age together is 190 the value of Cain the land of the one and he was born at their age 190 together in the land of Canaan the land of the one but he's not from here laughter joy happiness is not from here a person who lives only in space and time is not laughing is not joking is not looking uh, at reality numerous uh, I he comes from from there this is why he's not active and this is why he lives longer than anyone else in a way since we live in time our frequency is getting shorter you remember the speech of Jacob to Pharaoh there was a meeting and, ja and Pharaoh is very rude he's very rude he said, how old are you this is very rude like a farmer this is if you have noticed this when you s you were in let's say in, in the company of low life people the first question is how old are you or how many children do you have this is a very low conversation not even conversation information so Pharaoh asked uh, Jacob how old are you and he said Jacob short and uh, bad were my life or is my life and they not even achieve my parents life so because Jacob is uh, is active in time so he, he lives shorter than his father Isaac he has four women he has certain children including Dina he moves from Canaan to the land of Laban and then back to Canaan and then goes to Egypt he moves a lot he has a lot of friction in life Jacob Philon from Alexandria when he interpret how to say interprets the Bible they already sees the Bible as an allegory in his time he says that Jacob is the apparent apprentice yeah, how do you say how we call him Hami, ha, the one who makes praxis practical he says Isaac this is how Philon sees the three patriarch is Isaac is the natural talent because natural talent is not from this life it's a given a person comes with a gift to be a painter or something so he sees Isaac as a natural talent that a person comes with to this life because natural talent is not from here but he sees Jacob as how do you say the man who makes praxis Hamit Amen let's say a person wants to learn to be a piano he says all the time practice five hours per day practicing so he sees Jacob as person who tries to be better in this life and Abraham this is interesting how Philon sees the three of them Abraham is the inner learner in us this is how he sees Abraham all the time learns and go forward Isaac is the natural talent that a man is born with when he comes to this life and Jacob is the one in us who makes a, a practice. Practice. 
This is how we see the three patriarchs inside of us as an allegory. Questions or thoughts, impressions that you have? I just want to say thank you to, to share with us. It was a great session. It's uh, amazing to be here and thank you to you and Fernando and Felipe and Eniola and all friends on YouTube because it's a great moment to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I would like to wish you a very good weekend. Shabbat Shalom. And we shall, we shall meet here next Monday and we can schedule a session if you need, Fernando or friends, whenever you want to, to discuss things that are being... Thank you, dear friends. Thank you for everything. And Thank you. It was an amazing journey. Thank, Thank you, Aniola, Felipe, Rodrigo. Thank you. Shalom, shalom, everyone. Shalom. 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 shalom.